Hi, and welcome to another segment of Kiss. That is, keep it simple, sir. Keep it simple, senorita, senora. Keep it simple, sisters, and thanks of God. We're coming to you again with another production. The house is filled once again. The subject today will be restore, renew, and recovery. And I am glad to share with you today, we have our co-host, the vivacious, Dr. Tawana Hawkins. And we will start with her opening, get a little bit more about herself and what we're going to talk about today. Then we'll let each one of our guests share their name and who they are, a little bit about themselves. And we will get this show on the road. All right. Um, hello, everyone. I am Tawana Hawkins. I am the director and founder of House of Restoration, also of Jules Gift. I brought some wonderful people with me today to share their journey and their story, hopefully to inspire others and give them some inspiration, strength, and hope. My name is Danny. Uh, I'm a house manager and a resident at House of Restorations. Um, I'm also a chemical dependency counselor as well as a certified peer support. Um, but I'm also an addict in recovery. And I've been in recovery now for three years. My name is Tony, and I'm also a resident at House of Restorations and also a certified chemical dependency counselor and peer support specialist. And I've also, I'm also a recovering addict, and I've been in recovery two years. Okay. Hello, my name is Anthony Williams. I'm also a recovering addict, and I am a, a client at the House of Restoration, and I'm one of the heads of houses. Hello, I'm Andrea. I am not a client at the House of Restoration, but I am in uh, recovery. Um, I am the building manager at the 804 uh, downtown at 804 East Monument. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a volunteer, a, um, a mediator for Date Mediation Center, and um, a fighter for uh, the community. Yes. And you're understanding, my great co-host, I just want to sit in a little bit and watch her work. She does a great job in handling her job, uh, the House of Restoration. So, Ms. Hawkins, would you tell us a little bit more about what the production is today as far as Restore, Renew, and Recovery? Yes, we are in the business of restoring and renewing, and recovery is our number one. Um, that has been one of the factors here in the community for a very long time. I'm also a licensed counselor and I've been on the other side. So I know how hard it is to find someone that really wants to stay sober, um, really wants a good clean environment and stay safe. So finding them housing has been a very difficult and making sure it's in a good environment. So what I try to do is make sure they have a strong, make sure it's safe, uh, make sure they can get all the resources. That's the biggest thing is giving them the wraparound services, wrapping around our arms with love. Um, if it's the spiritual, whatever we can do, we want to make sure we make it available. And the biggest part is here is their testimony. It's about their strength they're going to share today. And that's why I do it. I do it because, one, a lot of people don't want to. They think, oh, we, they're, they're no good. Nobody wants to deal with them. They're on drugs. No, forget about them. No, I don't believe in that. I believe there is a good person. It's just hidden, and maybe they're going through and maybe I can help them out of that. So that's the foundation of everything and making sure um, they can actually, once they do, I do charge them with giving that. And that's part of the reason why we're here today. <laughs> and you know, before we get started, again, do you find these people or they find you? How did that go about? They do a good job finding me. Um, the great thing about it is um, my work so far I have not advertised. It's only been by word of mouth. It's about people that have come through my home, that have been great successes, some that haven't, they still tell people. They tell them about the experience, because they say if you want a, a place that you're serious about, that's what they first thing they say, if you're serious about it, we have a great place for you. Yeah. Um, so no, it wasn't, I didn't start off like that. Um, it was basically, um, I saw the need, uh, and I had a home, and it started from one home, and now it's eight mm. to this day. And that's just word of mouth. Yes. No advertising, so it's coming straight from the heart. I know it's not only just drug rehab, it's also human trafficking. Yeah. I've heard stories mm -hmm. 
that you've had that you had to rescue someone <laughs> from being caught up in human trafficking. Yes, and also people coming out of domestic violence. So um, people don't realize that people that are, are involved with the human trafficking, a lot of times they don't choose to use the drug. They have to use the drug to control them. So a lot of times they may be going through treatment because people treat them so bad. They think, oh, you've been on drugs, you're horrible. No, that's not the case. And a lot of people have experienced trauma in their life. Mm -hmm. and have not been able to address it. So this is the opportunity where they can go to treatment. They can come and heal, have a place they can do self-care, because that's what I preach is self-care. Mm -hmm. um, making sure your medical appointments are together. Making sure you have the resources, if it's food, clothing. We want to connect them to the resources. And I get to work with these beautiful people, and uh, they're going to share their experience. So that's why I privilege to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we had to modify the string that it would fit because this woman is 10 feet tall, so we have to make it fit our string in your home today. <laughs> so go ahead, introduce and tell us a little bit more about the guest we have here today. Okay, um, before we do that, I wanna share um, our scripture, is that okay? Exactly, I'm sorry, bring the scripture up. <laughs> All right, so the scripture I chose um, is restore to me the salvation, your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit, which is Psalms 51, uh, 12. And the biggest part of that is the restore part. My name of my home is called House of Restoration, and that's exactly what it's there for, for you to have the opportunity to find yourself, first of all, because so many people have lost themselves, they don't really know who they are because drugs or alcohol, whatever the situation has taken over. So this is kind of a moment where they get to be self-revealing um, and do the healing that they need to do inside. So I am honored because I've had some, I have some great men. I did not choose to work with men, so I have to be honest with you because I didn't think I would benefit them and I didn't think I could help and I said, well, how can I help them? I can't, I'm a woman. And they say, yes, you can. You've been doing it all this time, why not? So with that being said, um, over three, four years now, <laughs> um, and I want them to share their experience and um, tell them how it's been since they've been there so far. So to my left, I have Daddy. He is my, uh, one of my house managers and he's been with me uh, three years. Almost. And uh, he's hung in there, so we want to find out what he has done. <laughs> um, and then next to him we have Anthony. Um, he's um, in our pilot program too, and I have to mention that too. Um, in the city, we went to the city and said, hey, we need more housing. So one of the community developers um, actually took a house that was boarded up and rehabbed it from the studs in, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So he's a part of that pilot program too. Okay. Um, Anthony is also with us today, so he's gonna share with us some of his experiences since he's been with me. And uh, I want y'all to tell, be the honest, tell the truth, the good, the bad, and uh, let people know um, what this thing is about. Because um, people don't know, recovery housing hasn't been around. People think it's a halfway home. Uh, it's not that. It's not a group home. Um, it's none of that. It's actually a home, a real home. It's not an institution. Yes. Um, and we're right here in the community where we belong, mm -hmm. healing. Um, and next to Anthony, we have the wonderful Andrea. She has been a supportive person from the very beginning. As soon as I told her I wanted to do something for recovery, um, she shared with me that that's one of her strengths and what she wants to do. And I'll let her talk about her a little bit more. But I have some really good people and I can't wait for you to hear about that. You ready? <laughs> All right, so let's start. All right, so I'm gonna go around the table. You guys feel uh, free to join in. Um, um, we wanna be relaxed today and have a little conversation. So anyone can jump in and they'll have to be in an order. Um, the first question I have is, who are you today versus who you used to be? Um, let's talk about that. Look, you're changing it up. I prepared for a whole different well, question. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I want to say who are you today. I just okay. added today. So who are you? <laughs> let's start there, and then you can add who you are today. All right. Anybody want to start? So, uh, me, um, today I'm actually a productive member of society. Um, I'm also giving back. Um, I work in the recovery field. Um, I also work with chemical uh, dependency, um, and I've placed pretty much my whole life around recovery, and it has worked out really, really well for me. And one of the biggest things that I've done is, uh, you know, take things slow. I didn't rush it this time, and uh, it's worked out really, really well. Okay. Anyone else? Who are you? All good. Okay. Okay. Um, well, um, I'm going to start with, like, the, I guess, the, not the, 
the, the more negative stuff. Um, I'm I'm a felon. Um, I'm an addict. I'm a, an abuse survivor. But um, today, like you said, who am I today? Um, I'm a fighter. Like I said, I'm a leader. I'm a volunteer. I'm a supporter. Um, and I uh, I could have been your next door neighbor, your daughter, your you know anybody. Um, because I, you know, carried on a, a professional life the whole time. You know, nobody knew the pain inside. So um, that's, um, I'm a healer now, you know. <laughs> I like that. You're on the upper back. Yeah. Right. I'm someone that shows up to work today. Um, I go to school. I show up for my family. Um, I turn my life completely around from uh, who I was two years ago, coming from having multiple prison numbers and being in the streets and away from my family for so long that not only did I not know who I was, they didn't either. And, um, you know, I get back to my community day, um, helping the next person out whether I know them or not. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Williams, who are you? Uh, I'm a person who can hold his head up today because when I was, um, in my active addiction, I could not hold my head up. I would walk with my head down because I was I had no self esteem, and I felt like a shell of the person that I that I used to be. And um, I, I have a purpose today, you know. I have I have goals. I have ambitions, and um, I'm also going for my peer support certificate because I want to give back, you know, because so many people have have helped me. I couldn't have did it by myself. I know this. You know, I, I just want to do for people what was done for me. You know, it's a driving force in my life. And House of Restoration has been a blessing. You two wine have been a blessing in my life. I just want to say that. And I appreciate that. And I, you know, I just want to move forward in a, in a positive direction because so much of my life due to drugs and alcohol was negative. I'm glad to see you here today. And I can see your confidence. Recovery looks really great on you guys. Right. Mm -hmm. So how did you get here to be here right this moment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that because we have to let people know that, yes, you may go through a lot. And just share a little bit, if you don't mind. You know, they need to know that there's still hope, that there's people actually out here that care. Because we have a lot of recovery homes that they actually don't care. Um, they, if you don't have your money up front, you're out the door. Yes. They don't care about your your pay. Can you? Oh, I didn't get paid this week, or, or you're late that. home from work mm -hmm. and they kick you out. Right. Like, what? Or if you're late for anything. I had one girl said she went in the kitchen after ten o'clock shop and made a peanut butter sandwich, and they kicked her out because she went to the kitchen after mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. So kind of talk about some of the things. How what? How'd you get here? Um, my experience. I've been to treatment fifteen plus times. Um, Every sober living in Columbus uh, you can think of, I've probably been to it, and um, and that's true what you said. I've been kicked out of them for things that probably shouldn't have been okay, and um, you know I, I held that as reasons to continue using. But uh, you know now I see that. But uh, not all sober livings are out for the right things, um, money, um, you know, clout, clout, mm -hmm. trying to get up on the totem pole for the. Um, whatever program they're working under. Tax rate. Um, yeah, all the insurance, whatever it is. And, and it's rough because people <coughs> are trying to do the right thing and get their help and not everyone wants to help you. Mm -hmm. How'd you get here, Dan? So I'd say with me, uh, like Tony, I also did, I've had 13 plus treatment facilities um, and that's long inpatient treatment facilities. And, you know, six and a half years incarceration, um, two, three, four, five years homeless. Um, and it just got to the point to where I needed to do something else. And I never did sober living because I always had a safety net. I always had a family that was there to catch me when I fell. Well, when I didn't have that safety net, I was forced to grow up. And uh, when I did grow up, uh, it, it was set in my lap. It was kind of weird how it worked out because I had planned on going somewhere else and then this was thrown in my lap and I took it and it turned out to be one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life because not only do you not have to worry about financial 
but it also gives she also gives you time to work on the things you need to work on to to get developed as a person to build a foundation underneath you. So when it does come time to go out to the real world, you're you're not thrown to the wolves. You've got a pretty good plan set forth, and it just makes it easier to transition. Like I said, I've been with her three years, and my transition's coming. But this this three years that I've had, it, it, it's what made my recovery. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. How'd you get here? Uh, when I was in um, uh, rehab, uh, when it was time to go, they asked me what recovery house I wanted to go to. And I heard a lot of good things about House of Restoration. So I decided to uh, go to House of Restoration. And uh, it's like Danny said, um, they're not all created equal. Some recovery houses, all they care about is, is, is your money. And because uh, I, Two have been to more than one. And I was just hoping that it was a good place, and you know, when I got there, you know, I, I seen that it was different. I had a, I had a chance to uh, take care of things that were really important. You know, they weren't screaming for when you're going to get a job. You know, when you're going to get your food stamps. When you're going to get this. When you're going to get that. They were more concerned with how you're doing, mentally, physically, and spiritually, than than uh, than um, the other things. And, uh, and that was uh, really important to me because what I, you know, the main thing was, you know, getting my my life back, getting my head straight because I was uh, pretty messed up when I got there, you know, as far as, you know, my, my thinking and I wasn't in really good physical condition either. So it was probably a blessing that I didn't have to immediately go to work because I had done a lot of damage to myself and those couple, those couple of months where well, I had a chance to uh, settle in and, and think about life and, and uh, think about how it's going to go forward were really valuable to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Miss Angela. How mm -hmm. did I get here? Mm -hmm. A whole lot of wrong moves. <laughs> but listen, like, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take them back because, I mean, if I... You can't, you can't appreciate any good that you, like the smallest things, you know, like, unless, in, until you feel that, that pain and get, and get down. And, you know, once you get all the way down to, to rock bottom, the only way to go is up, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's no where else to go. So, um, you gotta, you gotta start pushing upwards. And so I, um, I appreciate and credit a lot of the like bad things that I had to experience because that made me stronger and stuff and then it, you know you, you can only learn from it and, and if you don't then you know you're you're wasting an opportunity I feel like but um and then also a whole lot of good moves the right moves at the right time um taking being fearless I guess I would say like not afraid to try stuff that I know like um is the right thing to do you know you don't necessarily want to do it but if you just grin and bear it and, and dive in um sometimes it's the best thing for you um i didn't um I've, I've not been in one of your houses but when i first went um when i first came out of my first inpatient treatment i went back home and uh i was home for i went back to um the facility that i was at the next day and i said you got to get me out of there mm -hmm. <laughs> you know this is i I had dope still in the couch, you know, like hidden. I knew, you know, it was it was awful. It was um, a terrible environment, awful person, um, just everything, the memories. And so they got me in, um, I think, 48 hours later. And if they didn't, if I didn't have anywhere else to go, I would have never, that whole entire time that I was in invasion would have just been wasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what you make something very important because a lot of people go back home and say, "Hey, I can go back and back yeah, into the." I don't routine. need that. I have a home. Yeah. I, you know, no. And like you said, you I got need you, it. You, you might have stuffed the drugs in the couch because mm -hmm. you know you you know, and that's the thing is, you have to have that time before you are pushed back into that, yeah. and and your time, and uh, it's so funny when I first met you, it's like, where were you at six months ago? I was like, I've been right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, it's something that um, Anthony said, aka Tony. He says, "Why don't people know about you?" I said, yeah, exactly. Right. Same, same with my place. Yes, the right people do. Cause I, I don't, I don't, cause I don't brag. I don't go say, hey, go, no, hey, you need some help. Well, that's not why you do it. Yes. Right. 
That's the difference. Know. It's a big difference. Um, so that's, it goes into the next question. What do you want everyone to know about uh, recovery, recovery housing? Or what do you want them to know? Mm -hmm. I do switch it up. You deal with it. So what do you want everyone to know? Like um, someone that, what is this recovery housing? Like they wouldn't have a clue. They don't know that it's not, you know, sometimes you might want to have like a little pit stop. And that's what I call it, your leaping pad to success. That's what I call recovery housing. Right before you back into family and dealing with everything else, you get a little break and then you can heal and you can shut out the outside world and only let them in when you're ready. And a whole house full of tattletales to hold you accountable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. It is though sometimes. So it's not it what important? you want, but it's what you need mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Why do you think that's important? Having that person that pulls you up, say, hey, and you need to watch yourself mm -hmm. because um, you, especially when you're newly sober, you're in that like pink, pink cloud moment and you don't want to disappoint anybody and you want to show everybody like I can do this, you know, and um, outward appearance is starting to come back in because before you didn't, you didn't care if you walked outside with mixed matching slippers, pajama pants and mm -hmm. three feet of snow, you was going mm -hmm. to wherever you were going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, and so you start to care more and you like bring that, you know, that, that comes out mm -hmm. and you, you want to make up for, you start to f feel the need to make up for the things that you might have done, you know, to or against other people. And so that's important to kind of have somebody there to remind you, like, you know, stay on the right track, you know, you can do this or or at least the fear of like they're gonna tell on me. Mm -hmm. Whatever works. Right, right. <laughs> Having that peer to peer because they know, and another person that's in recovery would know. Say, hey, something's not right. They'll be able to call you exactly. out. Exactly. Why do you think that's important? So I'd say for me, um, having somebody hold me accountable because, you know, even if we do go to treatment and we get out of treatment, a lot of us we don't know what act right means. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what we might think is a normal day. Somebody else might look at us like we're crazy. Mm -hmm. And so to have somebody there to tell me, hey, I'll do that. Or that's not what you're supposed to do. Or, you know, be a big brother to me. Um, as far as the recovery too, I mean, that's why it's good to have a sponsor, somebody that can help you learn how to live, hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and this, 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 like I said, it all plays a part in growing up, being a man. Um, you know, being an adult, well, sometimes I don't like it. <laughs> it has to happen. But yeah, I, I, I need somebody in my life to hold me accountable because quite frankly, for a lot of years, I didn't know how to live. Anyone else? And uh, what she said about not wanting to disappoint others, sometimes I don't want to disappoint myself. Mm -hmm. And then also with what he just said, uh, I don't see my own mess coming sometimes, so I need someone else to point it right. out to me. Mm -hmm. They've been there before. Right. I don't know if you guys heard uh, me introduce you guys when I said, who are you guys? I said, that's my family. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say resident, client, that's my family. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I look at you. I told them you got a fairy godmother without asking for one. Uh, I got a mother, a mother, and a yeah. father, and a sister, and, <laughs> and, a, and a doctor. A doctor. A doctor. <laughs> uh, this is about them. All right, so the last question that we want to hear from our uh, ladies as well is why is uh, recovery housing important? And if you um, have any points you want to share, I want to encourage you to share them now before we switch. So why is recovery housing um, important, and how does one seek help to get there? So... I'm gonna go ahead and share on this one. Recovery housing is important because like we've been talking about this whole time is when somebody gets thrown back in the same thing they come out of. So, you know, as they come out of a drug infested life and when they go to treatment and they come out and they get right back in the same thing, what's gonna happen? So like we was talking about, you have a chance to, get, to, to take a break, to learn how to live another way, um, have the accountability right there on site um, and be able to take the time to, you know, get your life together. You know, it took us a long time to mess our lives up. We need a little bit of time to get back together. Um, so I would say the, 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 the way to find, uh, you know, good housing for after treatment is just ask questions. Um, that's, I, I ask questions about about house to restoration, house to restoration, I get my treatment and got the questions answered, and they were right on. Yeah, you're gonna have nerves, 
going to sober living. It's new. It's scary. But once you jump in mm -hmm. and go head first and give it all you got, because that's what you're going to have to do in recovery. You can put the same amount of effort yeah. you put into messing things up as you do to fix it. Mm -hmm. You have to, if not, well, more, mm -hmm. but, you know, that comes with, yeah. with time. But you gotta, you got to want it, you know. Mm -hmm. you got to get addicted to recovery, kind of, you know, like you just kind of flip it. It becomes your lifestyle again. Right. Mm -hmm. So why is recovery housing important to you, Anthony? Um, because multiple times of getting out of prison or halfway houses or even treatment facilities and not having somewhere to go, but knowing I still want to stay stopped and just knowing that I'm going back to exactly what I just came from and knowing just, well, what's the point of going back to what I know? Right. There's no change. So what, what now? Mm -hmm. Nothing else has changed, so how is everything else going to change? Like a hamster wheel. Yeah. And um, it's important because it helps me build that foundation to be able to change everything else, to stay stopped, to change those behaviors, build a foundation, get a job, and build a recovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll read out for you, then Andrea, and we'll, we'll switch to our lady. Well, to me it was, I needed a, a positive atmosphere, a stable atmosphere mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to come to after I got out of rehab. I didn't really have anywhere positive to go. And it would have been, uh, like they were saying, the same old thing, you know, the same old bad atmospheres, you know, and probably around a lot of people that didn't have my best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what I didn't want to happen, because I needed somewhere to start off or on a good foot and not negatively. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Yeah. Andrew, you want to finish this Yeah, off I wanted to add one more thing, too. Yeah. Like, um, when we get out of treatment, we're, you know, when we first get into sober living, and, and that that time frame there, it, you're going to get hurt. You know, like, you're going to expect things. You're going to, you know, you make all these grand plans, like, when I get back home, I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. or I'm going to, you know, see this person, that person. I'm going to get my kids back. I'm going to go back to work. You're going to get hurt. And so to have that safety net to, like, kind of have that time and that the, to process that, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's very important. And, like, people don't want to think about the, the stuff that can go wrong, but it, things can and do go wrong. And so, like, to have that because, you know, that – things going wrong when you first get out it yeah and you but you're out on your own or you're back at home that can go from like zero to 60 wrong like way quick so to have a support system just built into your home is important. very important All right. well what do you think bishop well great and i tell you i know we're getting ready to uh mm -hmm. change over mm -hmm. and we uh I, now you have both male and female mm -hmm. And we never know where God will have us to go. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the uh, whosoever will. Mm -hmm. And you such a great job, doing such a great job. And nine to one, Dr. Hawkins, we're going to switch this thing. <laughs> Having had all those beautiful testimonies and those that with your house of restoration, look what we've done to the set now. Yeah. So we're going to leave you to introduce, or have them introduce themselves and mm -hmm. continue the show rolling here. Of course. Well, we can't have it um, with, with just the men. we got to have the women too. Yes. So you got to hear both sides. So I have some beautiful people that are here with me, uh, more extended family that's gonna share and hopefully give some inspiration to others. And um, with their experience, maybe motivate someone mm -hmm. to maybe seek treatment and get help today. So to my left, I'll let her introduce herself. She is one of my house managers. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Jody Kraft. I am a house manager and a resident at House of Restoration, and I'm also a certified peer recovery supporter. Next to Jody we have I'm Malin Strasball. I'm a former resident at House of Restoration, and I am now a house manager at Her, Her Story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Dodie. Um, I'm a house manager in training uh, and just a regular worker. 
husband, one of my great residents. She don't want to brag on herself. <laughs> and Hello, I'm Moncada Abbott. Um, I'm a resident at House of Restoration. <laughs> Hello, I'm Moncada Abbott. I'm a certified peer recovery supporter, and I'm also a resident at House of Restoration. Awesome. And see that beautiful smile, y'all? Yes. She came, she brought her spirit with her. So the biggest part here is hearing the other side. Let's hear mm -hmm. about how the women feel about being in recovery and what it looks like being in recovery housing. So the first question I ask everyone is, tell people who, who are you? And share your experience if you might, just a little bit about who are you today. Jody, would you like to go? Sure. Um, I have three years clean. September 6th was my, my three years. Mm -hmm. um, I am now a certified peer recovery supporter and I work at Goodwill Easter Seals um, at the women's shelter and you know it's really exciting that I am where I'm at today that I'm able to give support to other women and, and the resources that are out there and um, I'm also a mother and I have my kids in my life and uh, they call mommy all the time we see each other all the time and um, I'm a daughter and my mom's proud of me mm -hmm. and we talk like we talk all the time now she trusts me in her <laughs> house and stuff so it's it's like and I'm a sister and I'm an aunt and I'm a friend and mm -hmm. I'm just living the best life that I can live right now and you know with God behind me I I can do anything and I have been doing everything that I can and it's just amazing and that's why I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to be a resident at House Restoration to help me get to where I'm at today. That's awesome and I'm glad you are here and Thank I know you. it took a while to get there but I'm glad you trusted in the process and you were willing and you hung in there. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, would you mind sharing who are you today? Today, I am a supporter, I'm a fighter, um, and I am a strong, independent woman. And being able to help other women just like fills my heart. And educated, mm -hmm. she's going to yes. school. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Helping people, mm -hmm. it's my thing. And now you get to go on and help more women yeah. in the same capacity. That's awesome. Dodie, who are you today? Well, I'm Dodie. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober for a little bit over nine months now. And um, today I'm a person that actually really believes in herself. You know, um, I'm a person who's not so hard on herself or hard on others. And I'm a leader mm -hmm. and, um, and a very humble person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mommy, did you care to share who are you today? Um, today, um, I'm a domestic violence survivor. Um, I'm confident in myself now. I'm a mother. Um, I'm a productive member of society now. Um, I'm just, I'm a happy person now. Mm -hmm. You're doing a great job. And uh, as I told the guys, the cover looks so good on you guys. This is seeing your healthy faces today. So, what do you want? Um, everyone to know specifically about recovery housing and um and how did you get here so that will kind of share with people um so they'll know how did you get here so maybe they can find a way um maybe just going stepping up and saying hey i need treatment today and it's okay breaking the stigma because everybody wants to hide behind it or not acknowledging their mental health today so how do you help everyone or how would you help someone by sharing how you got here so how did you get here? And it, we can go in order, it doesn't matter. You can jump in. So who would like to go first and share how did you get here? I'll go. Mm -hmm. How I got here is I just really felt spiritually empty. Mm -hmm. You know, I was tired of matching, trying to match my insides with my outside. Mm -hmm. I was really spiritually miserable and I knew that something had to change. Mm -hmm. And age, I wasn't getting any younger. I was getting close to my 40s and I'm like, something's got to give and I got to give myself a chance. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be hard, but 
I wanted to know who I am mm -hmm. on the inside versus the way that I've been accustomed to being my whole life. Mm -hmm. I was just really tired and I was determined to fight to find out who I am without the booze mm -hmm. or the relationships. And it's a change in it. It's a, it's a change you go through. It's a process, like you said, of finding mm -hmm. out who you are. What would you tell someone today if they said, uh, I don't know about this recovery thing? Hmm. It's still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And listen to advice. Mm -hmm. and it's okay to take advice in it sometimes. Yeah, yeah it is. Because they, uh, they used to tell everyone in the prison, your best thinking got you there. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> your best thinking, ooh, yeah. I felt that for them. But having to tell someone today um, that recovery is okay, that um, being in recovery housing is okay, um, sobriety does look good because you have a more healthy spirit and you're building your confidence back up mm -hmm. and finding out who you are. Monty, what would you say? How would you get here? And what would you tell someone about recovery? Um, well, um, I was out there basically killing myself. Um, I was severely addicted to alcohol. Um, I was drinking on the job, um, just, just going nowhere. Um, wasn't able to really function without it. Um, it was, it was just really hard out there. Um, there was nothing left for me out there but to get help before something bad happened. Um, what I would say about recovery housing, um, it's not a prison. Um, you know, you do everything on your own will. Um, it's very helpful. Um, it gives you time to get yourself together. Um, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's important and why is it needed today? Why do you think recovery housing is important? To be able to put your recovery first and <clears throat> you first, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, some of the gentlemen share that um, not going back home right away, not going back to old people, places, and things. Because you knew what to expect there, but recovery housing, I guess that's the scary part because you don't know what to expect. But that's the adventure. Take the risk on your life. Like you, they said, if you took the risk to get a drug or a drink, Take the risk on your life to try something new. So what would you tell somebody about recovery housing today? And how do they get help? If someone walked up to you, how would they get help today? What would you tell someone? Well, <clears throat> I would tell someone, um, I would pro well, what I would do if someone came up and asked me how is I would tell them real briefly about where I was and where I am now and the reason for that is because of uh, recovery housing and it gives you uh, resources, structure, um, getting getting back with your family, friends, finding yourself, you having the opportunity to change your life around in a safe, healthy environment. And it's like before I came to House of Restoration, I was preferred somewhere else and that terrified me when I got there that was I was because I knew nothing about recovery housing mm -hmm. and I got there and it was unbelievable men and women living there BJ lived up in the attic 1 a.m. curfew some people were in recovery some people weren't and it was like well I was terrified I was like where am I going to go what am I going to do because I took all my stuff put it in my mom's car and left while my ex was at work so I could safely get out of there. Mm -hmm. And then I was terrified. I was like, I have nowhere to go. What am I going to do? Because like, my mom's wasn't an option at the time. And then my brother and his boss told me about you. And I called you immediately. And just when I spoke to you, how how caring you were. Didn't ask me anything about money, anything like And the help that you were able to provide. And I was... The fear went away, and I was excited and looking forward to going there, and it just blows my mind that even though I was, of course, clean and sober before I came, I wasn't getting anywhere with myself and changing my life around. I wasn't grown. I was just, like, stuck. So once I got there, it's like everything started happening in order, and it was, like, amazing, and I will 
forever be grateful for for you doing this. So I would tell this person that, mm -hmm. and then um, give them the resources that if if that's what they want and to be able to go and and get recovery housing because it's worth it. Some of them are not real, mm -hmm. but then you got the real ones, mm -hmm. it, and it's it's amazing. And I would totally recommend recovery housing to anybody in the need. Maylin, would you care to share your experiences, maybe some good or bad, or what have you experienced, and why is recovery housing so important? Just kind of um, share a little bit. It honestly, trials and tribulations for me because I've been in three different um, sober livings, and like you said, some are real and some aren't. And um, I honestly got the most out of your program. Like I worked on myself and towards my goals and my future. And I am so thankful for that. Is it because we were so strict in the rules? No. You can't go, you can't grow. Is it because we held you down, take your cell phone, take all your money? Yeah. No, none of that? No. All right, so if somebody wanted to get half the day, what would you tell them? Um, I would definitely um, recommend you <laughs> all the way. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's cute. I have to pay y'all later. <laughs> um, thank you. Dodie, what would you tell someone that's out there looking for help, they looking lost? I would tell them to come where I am. I have told a few people already. <laughs> um, yep. And mm -hmm. one of the main things that I tell them is that you're not micromanaged. Basically, you're being given enough rope to hang yourself if that's what you're <laughs> heading towards right. um, but you know you actually get the chance to take control of your life and there are so many resources mm -hmm. you know if you don't have any food don't worry about it mm -hmm. they're gonna find you a way to eat you know if you don't have clothing don't worry about it mm -hmm. if you don't have an income right now don't worry about it you know clean house free Wi-Fi <laughs> 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 You know, and it's actually a house, house, not it's real. not a treatment center. You go into your room, you cook, you clean, you know, you do what you would do. I feel like, because this is actually my first time ever to really feel the feeling of a safe home mm -hmm. at 38, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what I would, you know, tell the, 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 the person, because no one forces you to do anything. You know, you have control of your life. You know, so I got it. Mommy, somebody walked up to you and said, hey, what's this sobriety thing about? What's this recovery thing about? What would you tell them about? Um, I would tell them it's so worth it. Um, just being able, you know, to be in your right mind and, you know, be able to participate in the world and not just exist. That's a lot of people who just say, I'm, I exist, or they wait for me to tell them what to do. And I'm like, no, what do you want to do? And that's why in the process of even applying, I ask you to write a letter stating what your goals are. So many people have been told, to do. if I listen to everybody, I'll be a nurse right now. Not because I wanted to, because, oh, it makes it make good money. But I would have been miserable, because that's not where my heart would have been. Mm -hmm. But I would have listened to them just tell me what to do next. No, but what do I really want to do? And that's why I, I offer the opportunity. And plus, when I can come later on, I can say, well, your letter says you want to do this. Are you doing that? Are you on track for that? Because on this letter, it don't say that's what you're supposed to be doing. So that holds you accountable, one, because your your words <laughs> and what you want to do and how you're going to live this life. Um, my biggest thing is showing people that there is help because I think the biggest thing they don't know is help. They think uh, once you go to treatment, if you just go to treatment and you just go home. Um, telling people that there is a safe place. Um, I work with uh, Ohio Recovery Housing, and I try to share and tell people there's a locator on the site that can tell you where all the houses are. You know, if you want to seek the help, but then to hear your words, because it goes by your words, and that's what my advertisement is. It's been you. It's been you guys sharing, hey, you might want to think about this is a good place to come. So I applaud you guys and I thank you because I'm grateful for that. Because I know the other end, if you don't like something, it takes one person to complain. <laughs> and they don't hear about the good things. So that's another reason I want you guys here to share and let people know it's okay and break that stigma of what, what they say um, 
a mental illness looks like or, or someone in addiction, but now you're not. You're in recovery. You're restoring, hence the name of the uh, show today. It's a renewing process. And what does that look like in recovery? So within our last couple of minutes, I'm going to have you guys go around and share when, um, when to seek help. And once you're in recovery, what if you're having problems? I know a lot of times people say, well, what if I have problems and what if I need help? How do you get that help? Um, and why is it so important um, to have a sponsor? Why am I saying, do you have a sponsor in your life? There's nothing like having a peer-to-peer, -peer, and we talked about that with the men. Um, and then I'm going to have you guys just share a little bit about um, what has been some of your struggles and uh, what's been your triumphs um, to get you here today. So if you don't mind, and we can chime in. We don't have to go in order and all that. Um, telling people when to seek help, how do I get the help, and what does it look like? Anybody like to share any experiences or any funny stories? Because you guys got some. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> so when help is available, what do we do? And when do they seek help? What um, do we do? I would just say reach out as soon as possible. You know, uh, a lot of us have made mistakes for the next person, so they don't have to go through the same things that we've been through. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with what you said. Um, as soon as possible because, um, you know, you did all this dirt and stuff to get what you wanted so you can get your fix. Why not do that to save your life? Change, change the way things are going. So I would like definitely immediately re reach out because there's support out there. Like you said, a lot of people do not realize what's really out there to help and it works and um i just i just i just want to help so many i just wish that they knew that there is help out there and hopefully if somebody watches this they realize like hey they did it they're in a safe place and they're making it somewhere i can too so if I can, y'all can, I promise. Have you regained anything, restored or renewed, like our title? Have anything restored in your life? My certified period count. Oh, I've been fighting to get this for a while. Um, I'm a certified peer recovery supporter for the state of Ohio. It, for some reason, took a very long time for me to get through and to finally get actually certified um i was waiting on it for a while and i fought for it and worked my butt off for it and i finally got it and i'm actually doing it as a job now and i love my job mm -hmm. i love it i love helping people i really do because any even if it's just one person like you know even so some people just need someone to talk to mm -hmm. people don't know support having support you, you need it's like that's a must mm -hmm. and so just, if I'm there just to listen to somebody vent then and that makes them feel better then that makes me feel better mm -hmm. and it helps me help them mm -hmm. you know okay. what I'm saying it's, it's good I'm looking at you May because you're going to be next to her so <laughs> you know, like having a strong support system um is amazing because like with the newcomers when you go to meetings and they have you pass around that book and you get those numbers and they tell you to like make a call when you need someone like that one phone call can really make a difference especially the importance like you said of having a sponsor mm -hmm. somebody that understands that knows what you're going through yeah. that's yeah. the big thing mm -hmm. for someone to understand because mm -hmm. if you don't understand don't say you understand if you haven't been there right. done yes. that went through that yes. so you're right absolutely mm -hmm. right it's important for sure. Ladies? What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so what would you tell someone coming in? Have you been able to restore, renew while you've been in your recovery? What have you been able to restore? I know like an example. Um, so, you know, in my case, family's not always the best. Mm -hmm. I've learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. But um, finding out who I am logically and not allowing my pride to always take the first seat you know has been one of my biggest accomplishments since i've been here because i was raised in such a strict home and everything had to be perfect and i've been conditioned like that all my life mm -hmm. so pride has always been first and uh understanding that i'm a human being mm -hmm. 
accepting that I'm wrong when I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Not always having to be right has been one of my greatest accomplishments, and it's and and it's really helped me to open up doors. Well, for me, mm -hmm. you know, um, working with my counselor slash my sponsor has really helped because I work. One of the things that brought me here was suppressed anger mm -hmm. and resentment. Mm -hmm. So working with him really, really helps me to look at things for what they are or not what I think they are in my head. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's good enough. That's great. Yeah. Because um, someone come in and think about like, what would I do? How would it help? Or what is this all about? That kind of answers that for them. And that's what I wanted to give them the answers. Uh, Monty, what would you tell someone? <laughs> Um, and if they want to seek help, and have you been able to renew and restore? Um, I've been able to have an actual relationship with my mother now. Um, it's been strained for a long time. Um, now, you know, we can talk on the phone, and it's not like a forced conversation. Um, I've strengthened my relationship with my daughter, um, and, you know, she's been you know, through it all with me and, you know, just the fact that she still wants to be with me, like, I really appreciate that and that's just great. Um, me and my father, our relationship, you know, he's been there for me, like, throughout it all because he's a recovering alcoholic as well mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just, um, it's just shown me, you know, how much he's there for me and stuff and I just you know all my relationships have just been strengthened and I'm just really blessed for that. What do you want um, everyone to know about your experience? Um, and we talked a little bit about what you've gone through but hearing um, before because I know a little bit about you but hearing how important it was to have your own bank account and getting your own mm -hmm. debit card and, and um, letting women know that it's okay. Because I, I meet a lot of women in uh, domestic violence, they don't know how to get out. They were afraid. They've been beaten down. Um, what would you tell someone in, um, today if they really wanted to get some help? Because I would hide you. I'd just let you know if you can. <laughs> I would come and keep you safe, even though I can't. But just to tell someone um, today about your experience, what would you tell them um, that you've been able to gain so far? Or anything you want to share? Well, um, I've gained a lot since I've been with you. I've been with you right over two years, maybe two and a half years. And, um, boy, the stuff I gained. Just like you said, the bank account. I haven't had a bank account. I don't know how long. <laughs> I don't even remember, but in it, in a probably wasn't allowed to bank there anymore, <laughs> wherever it was. So um, when I got to go open a bank account at a credit union, I thought I was so cool because it was a credit union. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, so I got to do that. And that just, I, I don't know, it made me feel good. I was like, wow, I got a bank account. I got a checking and a saving and a debit card. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, because I haven't had that in forever. And, you know, I got my um, kids. Well, not, I have my visitation with them through the courts. I went and filed that because, um, of course, their dad was playing games with me. So I got my kids in my life, and I got my car, got a driver's license, got a job. Now I'm just peer support, house manager. Um, and, my, and the biggest thing is my mom is so proud of me. She sent me a card in the mail saying how proud of me she was, and congratulations. And I've gained a lot. I've gained a lot of love for myself like I I hated myself I was like I, who, I don't even know who that person was but I love who I am and the strength I have and the respect that I have for myself and I'm just I'm just I've gained so much I can go on and on and on and on but I know we're limited so <laughs> right yeah. but you know what I was thinking I thank all of you guys for coming and sharing on both segments Dr. Tawana you've done it again <laughs> But the only thing, do you guys agree with me? Maybe not a doctor, maybe a saint. You think we can yeah. call her a saint? Yes. I usually anoint people. Can I pour, anoint I her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> saint, 
Tawana. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> All right. Well, we're so glad and have again you did a great job co-hosting and bring and and then you're hosting too. So we got some more days and times ahead, hopefully. So take us away. We are ending at this show at this time. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming and sharing your experience, strength, and hope. That's exactly what I want you to do. Um, I don't ever want to advertise. I want you to be my advertisement. They say they know you by the fruit of your spirit. You guys are my fruit. So I want you guys to grow and do great things. And if you ever need me, you know I'll be there. All you got to do is make a phone call. And uh, I just wanted to tell you, share the story. Let somebody else know that there is help out there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Miss Do the magic. Click your fingers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>